Protesters in Slavyansk, one of the main focal points of resistance to Kiev, are preparing to face the crackdown. Armoured vehicles are converging on the city and locals say all roads have been sealed off. RT's Maria Finoshina reports now from the restive region. We've seen these people protesting for weeks in eastern and southern Ukraine. First, taken to the streets, then taken over state buildings. We're peaceful people who simply demand that the Ukrainian authorities listen to us. For about a month we went to Lenin Square demanding a referendum. Nobody listened to us. Only after the seizure of administrative buildings took place, only then did they hear our voices. But what the government heard was the voice of what they say is separatism and terrorism. Then they sent in the army. The army should be with people and not against it. It's unimaginable sending troops against its own people. In all my life I never thought something like this could happen in my country. I want my children to live in peace. It's frightening. What outrages Kyiv's interim government is the protesters' demand for greater autonomy and possibly independence from Ukraine. But people say they have their own reasons for finally taking a stand. We are against the illegitimate fascist government that come to power as a result of a coup. Activists in the East do not agree that the coup-appointed government represents the majority of the population. They feel that ultranationalists from other parts of the country help put such people in power. Now key positions in the government like the head of national security, are occupied by nationalists. I want to live here the way I want to, according to my conscience. I don't want anyone to tell me what language to speak. Following earlier threats from the government to deprive the Russian language of its official status as the country's second language, protesters feel their rights have been undermined. I want the referendum to take place all over Ukraine. I want the money we earn with our blood to stay here, so that we ourselves decide how to spend it. We've been silent for too long. We were busy working. We were feeding the rest of Ukraine instead of boosting our own economy. But now we've had enough. As the country's leading industrial and economic hub, people feel they should have a fair say when it comes to governing their own region. After the eruption of discontent, many people here are now afraid of the ongoing crackdown on dissent. I come here every day after work as I want to support our Donetsk People's Republic and those men who are now inside waiting for the military operation against them to start at any moment. We came out here to defend our men. Because if Kyiv sends troops here, we won't allow that to happen. We will stand up as a life shield. Because we won't allow our Donetsk to be burned like they burned Maidan Square in Kyiv. Self-rule protests have been shaking Donetsk and the wider east and south for months. These barricades have attracted different people and different motivations. But it seems that, as far as Kyiv is concerned, they are all the same and they will be treated the same, with a large-scale military anti-terror operation against them, which is now in full swing. Marie Fenoshina, RT, Donetsk.